So, a stewardship campaign and Veterans Day walk into a church one Sunday. The stewardship campaign looks Veterans Day up and down and says, Hey, what are you doing here? And Veterans Day says, same as you. I'm talking about service with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is our greatest commandment, to love God and our neighbor with our whole selves. Service and giving require an acknowledgement that someone else is as important as are we. I wonder if we'd thought about it in quite, in quite that way. When we give of ourselves, of our earnings, or our time, or our entire life, we are telling the world around us that this other person has a right to peace, or to a compassionate mentor, or even to a new mobility accessible deck, some people know about this, or to books, or to food, as do we. We mark the 100th anniversary of armistice today, or tomorrow. The day the world thought we had ended the war to end all wars. There is not a military person who wishes and prays that this would have been so. Men and women sign up to serve because if they don't, people will likely do, die or lose their freedom rights. So from Franciscan Richard Lohr, we learn, an act of love is its own reward and needs nothing in return. I'm going to read that again. An act of love is its own reward and needs nothing in return. This demands that we learn to love the stranger at the gate, he says, the one outside of our comfort zone who cannot repay us, and so we can be repaid by God. He says, do you realize how revolutionary that is? It is what Charles Einstein means by a gift economy, and yet most do not realize he is merely repeating what Jesus already taught us, but has never been seriously considered by most Christians. So back to me speaking. The Prince of Peace came to give us life. Life eternal, life in abundance in the here and the now. In our Ruth reading, Naomi will not leave her mother-in-law alone in the world. Making a vow of marriage to her husband must have remained a commitment to her mother-in-law in Naomi's mind. You may know that in ancient times, losing a son meant either extreme poverty for a mother or sometimes even death. The son was the mother's only line to economic well-being. But I will not admonish Orpah. She chose a different path than did Naomi, reluctantly accepting her mother-in-law's offer to relinquish her to her family. This was a gift her mother-in-law offered, and she accepted it. Ruth's offer to relinquish both her daughters-in-law provides us with a peek into her character. She was a woman of good character, emotionally mature, with good courage. Servants of all kinds bear these fruits of maturity. Christian servants respond because they trust that God has and is taking care of them. They grow a heart of generosity. That is why our sermon series is titled Gifts of Love, because we gift out of what we have and sometimes out of what we barely have, as we heard in the, this morning's children's sermon. Now with all those who serve in any capacity, there are those who exceed expectations. 
Now, how would Jesus see us as exceeding expectations? Can we as Christians exceed expectations, I wonder? I think we have our answer in the gospel reading. Our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So I don't think God needs us to exceed expectations. These are just simple, yet enormously complex expectations, aren't they? If we're going to be honest. If we truly followed them well, we might be like Jesus or like St. Francis of Assisi. Richard Rohr explains further, St. Francis of Assisi was a nonviolent and soft prophet, keeping God free for people and people free for God. During a pivotal period when Western civilization was moving into rationality, consumerism, even then, and non-stop war. Francis himself, you may not know, was a soldier and his father was a clothier, a maker of clothing. From this personal experience, Francis was able to offer a positive critique and an alternative way of living. His sweeping message and lifestyle were a warning about money, power, and war on a much larger scale. Like Jesus, Francis was a non-exclusionary bridge builder. He tried to stop Christian crusaders from attacking Muslims. Should I say it again? He tried to stop Christian crusaders from attacking Muslims. He wanted Christians to carry the gospel of peace, yes, to the Islamic world, but not to take up weapons. But he had little success with, others, with either side with either side. The Muslims were doing their damage too. Francis tried to point us beyond the mere production, consumption economy, and the typical us versus them mentality, which still dominates the world today. Okay, that was Richard Rohr. This is me speaking now. A gift economy, the term feels magical on my tongue. When I was saying it, I thought, a gift economy. It conjures a world where we all run around sharing what we have, delighting in the sharing with one another. Oh, it exists. Well, it's Christianity. Jesus was the gift. Jesus gave his, gave his life for our freedom, freedom from our own human guiles. Those who served some terrible wars also gave their lives. They fought for freedom and in the hope of everlasting peace. Jesus too was maimed and tortured in his service for and to us. And many veterans come back to us physically injured. Richard Rohr reminds us that with a defense budget of $668 billion, many active service members and veterans qualify for food stamps. That's a sin. A gift economy. How do we love our neighbor who has served? And there were those who returned from service more damaged than they first realized. The effects of war wreaking havoc on their hearts, souls, and their minds. To serve takes physical, emotional, and mental courage. And as we ponder all of this in our hearts and minds, it begs the question, what am I prepared to give? We do, as do our veterans and the heroes and heroines of our readings today, know at a very deep level that we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. Do we not? Mm -hmm. This evokes the sentiment of all saints, which we 
faithfully and thoughtfully celebrated together last Sunday. So how much of our heart, soul, mind, and strength are we willing to give back in service in the name of Jesus Christ? How much have we considered rightfully belongs in the offering plate each Sunday? Our money, our money keeps the lights on. Without lights and heating, can we hold our holiday bazaar? For the community, maybe we can, be a little tough. The proceeds from which many projects of love can be realized from our church. Take a look at what we have received in offering for the last month. That's always printed in your bulletin. I want you to look at that. Is the change in our pocket the gift of love we bring, or have we prayerfully and thoughtfully decided on a weekly or monthly sum, and we offer that? How much does it cost to transform the world, do you think? Our offering should hurt at least just a little to give it. So I am closing our sermon this morning with a clip um, of a veteran, Chad Brown. Chad was one of those who came back from military service internally damaged. He had given all he had with his strength and his heart and his mind and it seems perhaps his soul too in his time of service. But he found a way to get it back. And after being taken care of, he does give back. Chad lives by the ethos of a gift economy. In our series, A More Perfect Union, we aim to show that what unites us as Americans is far greater than what divides us. This morning, Jan Crawford shows us the healing power of fly fishing. She went to Oregon and pulled on a pair of waders to see how one man is inspiring others with free outdoor adventures. Good morning, Jan. Well, good morning, John. So this man, Chad Brown, I mean, he says he was really at his lowest point when he found fly fishing. So now he's bringing different groups of kids and veterans to join him on the river. And they are casting their rods in Utah, Florida, the Arctic Circle, and across the Pacific Northwest. It's a bright, sunny day on the Crooked River in Central Oregon. Just around a bend, kids are angling for trout. But what's happening in this river runs much deeper than catching a fish. We're in the wilderness. We're only here for a couple more days, and we're going to enjoy it. There's no guarantee I'm coming back here with family. Yannette Garcia is a self-described city kid. Especially living with eight people, it's kind of rough sometimes, but, you know, it was a time to relax and just find yourself. That's what Chad Brown was hoping for when he started Soul River. The Portland-based nonprofit offers an escape into nature for veterans and kids who might not otherwise have the opportunity. What does fly fishing meant to you? It's a coping mechanism for me. It erases everything around me and allows me to focus on what's exactly in front of me right at that moment, basically. I'm, it may not have anything to do with getting the fish, basically, you know, uh, but I think, oh, I'm hooked. I got a fish. <laughs> Brown is a Navy veteran. He served in the Gulf and patrolled the dangerous streets of Mogadishu, Somalia. He returned home broken, desperate to escape the anxiety, blackouts, and nightmares brought on by PTSD. It all came crashing down to one place and it stripped me from everything. I lost completely everything. I became homeless. Everything? Yeah. Homeless. I was homeless in the streets in Portland, Oregon. What was the lowest point? Finding myself in the bloodline, sitting there pumping and trying to fill a pint of blood so I can get $20. I've never thought in my life that I was going to find myself in a place like that. And, um, and, and I was embarrassed. He started treatment at the VA for PTSD. He got a service dog named Axe, but it wasn't until a friend took him fishing 
that he found his real medicine. I was like a walking zombie. With that much medication in your system, I couldn't smile. When you hooked that fish, what did that feel like? It's that 